Is there other testimony in opposition or general testimony? Would the applicant or their representative? Oh, I, I was going Brandon to be amazed. I thought Brandon was hopping up to testify. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon would uh, I, I'd invite rebuttal from the applicant if you would choose. Thank you very much. Susan Wilson. Uh, I just want to touch on a couple points. Um, Mr. Regan uh, talked about the petitions. Um, the first petition, uh, he mentioned something about the um, second petition was done after the invite, but it wasn't done after they actually did the tour. So you got to see the second petition before the neighbors could actually come and, and visit the site. And I, I counted a few people that were there. And I mean, I, I came up with, you know, closer to 30, but um, it, it's not really that relevant. Um, I think I'd get in trouble if I was gifting out my client's land. So I certainly in the neighborhood meeting didn't um, offer a gifting of client's land, but I certainly told the neighbors that they were going to get a larger park with this proposal and that it included a larger park, which it does. Um, I think uh, in regards to the views that you... Nice. That's not you. That's You're okay. fine. <laughs> Thank you. In regards to the views um, that, that you saw up there with the existing parkland, it looked really cool. You could see all of it with Bennett's property. The, the fact of the matter is all of that is going to be gone because there's going to be houses built all around it, so you're not going to see. I mean, and that's what you're going to get preserved with the, the proposed parkland. Um, I, I don't see the issue with safety. I think if there's going to be issues with safety, the Parks and Rec are going to be able to deal with it. I don't know that that is, is prevail, you know, prevalent issue. Um, not that I don't promote safety. I also think that if we are going to consider the natural surveillance argument, then certainly if the RO, if there's multiple um, family residential dwellings in the RO that potentially could be there, then you're going to have even that much more natural surveillance with a new proposed park than just the nine lots that are going around the existing park. I know one of the planning and zoning members made a comment about having nine houses around a little park because it makes it look like it's secluded in only their park rather than leaving, leaving it open for the entire neighborhood. Um, but I think, you know, you build a park and they will come. And the bigger the park, the more they can accommodate. And I would once again encourage you to accept the Parks and Rec recommendation and approve the parkland exchange. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Is there other response in terms of rebuttal from the applicant? Okay. With that, I'll close the public hearing and open it up to the council for its deliberation. Bill, did you have something to add? Please. If I might, I just wanted to get back to the earlier question on the Asbury Lily property size. Mm -hmm. So the one parcel is just over 18,000 square feet, and the other parcel is 10,000 square feet in size. Just, just to. Get back. Walter? A question for Bill. Sure. Um, none of the numbers regarding park sizes tonight have included the existing Altura, Alturas Technology Park Park. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, the council, you see the uh, <clears throat> action put before you. How would you like to proceed? On the, uh, if you want to take this piece now. <gasps> The first uh, item would be to address the uh, uh, proposed parkland dedication. Listed as item A under action. I have action. a question. Dan? For staff, we w we're going to have to decide on the parkland before we can decide on any of the rest because of its ramifications throughout. I, I would say that there are really two items that are closely intertwined. Um, the zoning is what is. Well, I, I, yes. I mean, it, it, when we considered it during the Plan Zoning Commission, the Plan Zoning Commission really needed to come to a conclusion on whether they felt that the parkland should stay in its existing location or whether it should be in the proposed exchange location. Um, everything else falls in place after that. The parkland, additional parkland dedication requirement, once I guess that decision is made, is also dependent upon the zoning change, and that is really one of the items that is um, causing that increased parkland dedication. So uh, that does relate to the parkland it's in, to some degree, but certainly the determination about whether the council desires to exchange that property is, is a pivotal 
point for your consideration this evening. Thank you, Bill. Gary, did you have something else you wanted to add to that? No, I think Bill stated it very well. Okay. Yes, Walter. Uh, another staff question, um, Bill and, and Les. Uh, Bill, I think at the PNZ meeting, yeah, at the PNZ meeting, you said that Indian Hills Drive, I presume you mean down by the, the presently platted park, would be 36 feet wide and Blaine 40 feet wide. Is that curb to curb? I believe Indian Hills Drive actually might be, well, I think it's existing constructed width is 36 feet and Blaine's existing constructed width is 40 feet and those would be continued in the new subdivision. Curb to curb? Correct. I'm looking, I'm looking at Les to see if he either knows or wants to agree or disagree or I agree on uh, Indian Hills. I believe Blaine is a 44 and that it would be curb to curb. So. Okay, and for less, if I may, mm -hmm. what do you anticipate the parking, what parking will be allowed on Indian Hills Drive and on a pony when, when they're constructed? Or do you know yet? Well, on Indian Hills Drive, if we're using a 36-foot section, uh, most likely that would allow parking on both sides. It's closest to our current 34-foot standard, which is parking on both sides. Um, so I believe that's probably the situation that we would end up with. Alpone we won't hold you is to smaller, it. Um, and I think it would be constructed to 34 under our current standards, which again would allow parking on two sides. Okay. If that is indeed what they end up with uh, on the Alpony construction drawings design, I haven't seen that yet. But okay, yeah. thank you. Tom, um, I guess I'm I'm inclined to go with everything, with the exception of the exchanged parkland. I I haven't grown to accept that yet, and so I'm I'm. I'm I'm having a hard time with that. I I'm concerned about. Um, it is more space, but a lot of that space is taken up by uh, just a hill, and I'm worried about um, space that's useful for. I mean, it'd be great for sledding, I guess, but I'm I'm. I don't know if you know. I, I'm not sure that's the best way to use the land for parkland, and I like the flatter space that's. That we approved, you know, in 2008 when we first looked at this. So I'm, but but all the other aspects um, in this, I feel fine with. So I'm. That's where I'm currently located. I, I feel like, you know, the the suggestion of maybe doing something with uh, one of the lots on the uh, west side there. To open it up to the road, um, you know, as one as the one map showed us, I think it was Bill Parks or somebody that showed it. He put two lots out, and that doesn't add up to the nine thousand square feet. I said it right that time. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe there's some configuration where it opens against that side, the west side, that would work. It, but that's not really up for us to decide for that that modification. I just haven't grown to accept the exchange parkland piece of it yet. Okay. Do you want to continue discussion before putting motion forward? Well, I, you know, I don't know if other people want to keep discussing it, but I'd be willing to make a motion if somebody's willing to Well, they to can keep it. discussing it after that, but what? Right, sure. Well, why don't I make a motion that we, um, well, I could make a motion for the, the entire piece, but that's thick. So maybe I'd make a motion for just the first piece, which is just to decline the proposed parkland exchange. Okay. There's a motion. Do I hear a second? I do not. Tim, you had your hand up. We'll continue deliberation. Well, thank you, Mayor Cheney. Uh, I sit on uh, the Parks and Rec uh, Commission as their liaison. So these proposals have come before Parks and Rec on a couple of different uh, uh, circumstances. And in general, Parks and Rec uh, liked the proposal of moving the 
park uh, so that it be, would be contiguous with the Alturas Park. Uh, they felt that uh, a bigger park would serve all of the residents of Moscow better than serving uh, just the folks to the west, just the residents to the west. And so Parks and Rec had a tendency to look at it from a little bit bigger picture and all the citizens of Moscow. Um, that having been said, um, personally, um, the, th the three park possibility of the one little tiny park, the originally 2008 proposed park and the Alturas Park and then the dedicated park that uh, hasn't been developed yet seems almost unmanageable. I'm more inclined to um, take the proposed moving of the 2008 park and um, uh, adding it, the, the ground, the 30% larger area uh, to um, the existing Alturas Park. You want to continue the discussion or would you like to put a motion forward? Uh, that's just my position as of right now. I think there's three other council folks up here that might want a chance to speak. Okay, council members, Wayne. I'm going to have some questions for Dwight. First question, Dwight, is uh, can you give me an idea what size, how many square foot Alturas Park is? <laughs> It's less than an acre. It's less than an acre. Yes. Okay. I originally had that included in my memo, but um, I took it out for some would reason. These, would these two parks actually be physically connected? Yes. If these two parks, if, 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 the, if the land swap is done and we end up with one large park, does this still fit the guidelines of what we consider a neighborhood park? Or has it become more of a city park? Even with the addition of the um, Alturas, it's still a pocket park. It's still a pocket Any park. three acres or more to be okay. a neighborhood park. In looking at, uh, and, and I think you've probably looked at this too, comparing a parking situation between what you have at Alturas and who uses Alturas now and doing land swap, having a larger park there and more people using it, the neighborhood using it, looking for places to park, versus not doing the land swap and having a park, parking situation around uh, the current park. What's your feelings there? Well, we looked at that, and I don't think you're going to see a lot of difference one way or another. Um, a pocket park isn't necessarily meant as a destination point where you would drive. It's meant to walk. That's okay. why you have the quarter-mile walkability uh, service area. Um, Alturas, right now you do have some people that go over there and eat lunch, and I presume you would probably still have people that would go over there and eat lunch. I don't think you would have that many more. Um, there was also discussion about uh, high density um, adjacent to uh, the park uh, um, on the proposal that um, those folks are going to go to the park, whether it's located across the fence from them or whether it's located uh, a couple hundred or thousand feet down the road. Um, it's still going to be their park as well. Um, 